Well, when I started the, the Let's Play for the Zelda game recently, the Parallel Worlds, I started that while I was on hometown recruiting assistance in Arizona. And then when I got here, I had a little bit more downtime and whatnot. But then I started working late hours and getting there early because I had been to become here right when my particular part of my unit is having what's called a change of command. So the captain is being swapped out for a new one. And so I've had to stay late for that. And then we got put on what's called pre-deployment status. Even though we're not actually going anywhere, we were put on it for basically pre-deployment readiness status. So we got to be ready for deployment, even though we're not going, some of us. And I'm among those that are, should not be going, but that's kind of why that happened. I don't even look at that sign. I already remember how to do this. This wrong, wrong door. Should be, yeah, it's over there. Hold on. I think I'm pressing the wrong buttons. I know what you do is you have to press two buttons at the same time when you land. I think it's one plus something. I think it's either one plus two or whatever. Huh. <sighs> oh, fuck me. Do 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 do. So you want, what you want to do, if you don't remember how to do this, is you're going to want to go all the way down here. And when you go down here, you're going to want to hit 3D mode. You want to go to, well, you're, going to want, you're going to want to go to the, third, you know, the left side of the sign. It could say, oh, it's minus and one. I was pressing plus and one. So I was pretty close. I was pressing, on the Wii remote, there's plus, and then there's the home button, and then the minus button. I was pressing plus and one rather than minus and one. I could have figured that out, but I decided to be easier and just make this quicker and just go double check. Cause that happens a lot in, in games like this where you have to press like the plus or minus button while pressing uh, the jump button. It's easy to forget which one is the select menu or whatever. That's why I was super confused why I was pausing. I'm like, I'm definitely not pressing the right button if the menu is pausing on me. But uh, yeah. video well last part of this video actually because we're just gonna merge these two parts to continue um because someone was probably cooking bacon or left their shower door open while they were taking a hot shower steam or smoke will of any kind like with as easy as cooking bacon or what's it called anything like that 
fucking do that. Crazy, I remember playing this game like for the first time ever when I was like 10 years ago. Almost 10 years ago, yeah. This is like 2013, sometime in 2013. Oh, fuck, man. And I went like several years without playing it, and then I picked it up again in high school. Because I played it on and off when I was a kid throughout middle school, but I never really got super far into it. But then I played it in high school and I actually got really close to beating it and just chose not to beat it because I didn't want to stop playing the game. And I had a tendency of not playing games again after I beat them for a while. Create this level of Mario Maker. I didn't mean to do that. Also didn't mean to do that either. Could use a level up. That'd be nice. Why? 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 
My Wii Remote is spazzing out on me, bro. It's crazy. There we go. I'm surprised I remember this so well. It's been quite a while since I played this. I mean, it's been like five, like five years ish. Actually, no, not for this level. Because I did play this. I did get to World 3 um, when I borrowed my buddy's Wii. So, because of that, I know it's been only a year and, a, and a, maybe a year and a couple months since I've played from World 1 to World 3. But, like, actually beaten the whole game or gotten to, not beaten the whole game, but gotten to World 8 and done the Trials of 100 Rooms, both versions, that's been five years since I've done that. But it has not been five years since I've replayed this game because I replayed it all the way up until World 3. Um, I only had like a year or so ago. That's why I remember this level so well. Because it hasn't been as long since so I played it. That I did play the absolute shit out of this game. I have played it on and off for like many years, so. Some of it I'll remember, some of it I won't. Yeah, one, two, three, four.
another aspect of this game that's fucking amazing. The bosses are always hot, like top tier. to get on top of that and come through. Or is it like when you come sideways here, I think, over on top? You can't actually make that. If you time it right, you can actually not fall off again. It's possible. You can actually make that jump and not fall off of him. And just absolutely kick his ass. But I fell off, because I'm bad. Your presence here must mean that all worlds are beginning to collapse. That's a very oddly specific, accurate guess. Long ago, my people built a civilization hailed by the beacon of culture. Sadly, despite our power, there was one thing we were powerless to stop. The Dark Prosnothicus. 
Nobody knows who authored the dark book. It's foretold that eventually the events of the future. One last page is written that the chaotic power would devour the world. We knew how to be stopped. Our greatest minds devised a grand plan to stop the trend before it. We needed something with pure essence of love to comfort the to, to, to front the chaos. Researchers set to work and created the purity heart. We divided, we divided the purity heart into eight pieces and hid them in different dimensions. We hid them from their own for, for them for their own protection, waiting for the day a hero would arrive. Everything was going as planned, or so it seemed, but then the wheels of destiny began to spin widely out of control. It began with a very small incident. At the time, I was young and quite beautiful. It started the day I met two very t fetching young men. And you say my life set sail towards a mouse of love. Seemed to ask me out, but however, it was well you know. So we and I said, then, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. I did, you did show a short version, so I wasn't sure if you fully understand. <laughs> That's funny. Fuck, it takes so long that, like, like you know, this cuts, it, like, whatever, it fast-forwards automatically, and your characters fall asleep, and that's the short version. Shit, that's funny. Give me that damn purity heart. Give me the purity heart. Aw, oh, shit. Aw, oh, shit. Let's go. There we go. Alrighty, there you have it. Well, that is going to conclude it. Unless there's more cuts. Oh no, this is cutscene. We gotta watch this cutscene. Bro, this theme is so badass that when I, I used to love playing this track on the piano and shit, fucking fun as fuck. But now I kind of forgot how to play it. Oh yeah, we have the Princess Peach section. <sighs> One of the many tracks of Castle Black that are good. This is the track when you're exploring it, but there's a remix of this that you get to listen to when you're actually here for the final world. This part's gonna be a little bit longer because I'm gonna include this in this part. This is very reminiscent of the first Mario, Paper Mario game where you had to explore Bowser's castle without getting caught as Peach. I think you did something similar in Bowser in your door too. I really wish they continue this tradition in Sticker Star and in the newer ones, but at least this tradition was continued for three iterations.
This is a human home. Look. Don't wiggle like that. I found you cliff base. Took quite a fall. You hear me correct? I don't repulse you. I'm the tribe of darkness. Why would that matter? Anyone with a heart would not ignore an injured soul. That was the day that our paths crossed. That day, that was the day the tragedy was set in motion. So, once we get to a good stopping point, which we're getting near to, I'm gonna break it off for the day. But I think if I remember, there's like a safe lock off of here somewhere. But we are going to encounter at some point soon our second playable character, Princess Peach. We have four main principal play playable characters and each one of them you unlock via playing through the story and each one of them have a background in their story. And the story is well written for each character. Out of the entire Mario franchise, this is probably the most in-depth story that has ever been told in the whole Mario franchise. And this story is so in-depth that like, once you know it, that it is almost as in-depth as games like Xenoblade and Final Fantasy and a bunch of other stuff. And the story for this game is why, in my opinion, it is among the top 10 Mario games of all time. And it's one of my favorite games of all time, period, because the story, like, narrative perspective, this is one of the best games ever. It's, it's well done. Its gameplay is not bad in any way, shape, or form, but the, the story this game provides is on such a higher level that even if you didn't like the gameplay, this game would be, it would be worth it. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.